Hello, my name is Dr. Omide, and in this series, we are going to discuss the gross anatomy of the wrist and, um, and the hand. Yeah, so these are the objectives of osteology, the joints, muscles, and aspects of applied anatomy. So, the wrist joint is a complex joint made up of or, or consisting of the radiocarpal joint and um, the many relationships between the couple bones. So we have two rows of couple bones, the proximal row that borders uh, rather close to the radius, distal radius and ulna. From lateral to medial, you have the scaphoid, lunette, triquetrum, and the pisiform. And then the distal row from lateral to medial, you have the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and the hermit. So you need to remember that the scaphoid forms the flow of the anatomical snuff box and it's a bone that is notoriously has a notoriously poor blood supply the pattern of its blood supply is from the pro, uh, sorry from the distal portion to the proximal remember it has a uh, waist so it has a distal portion waist uh, proximal portion the distal portion is close to the metacarp sorry to the uh, distal row of the um, couple bones, so it's close to the trapezium, while the proximal portion is close to the radius. So the pattern of blood supply, the blood vessels are in the waist. The waist is the narrowest portion of the scaphoid, so it's more prone to fracture. So when it fractures, um, the blood vessels, mainly at the waist, they um, rupture. And since the pattern of blood supply is from distal to proximal, most of the time in scaffold fracture is the proximal part that suffers um, a vascular necrosis. So it has a poor blood supply and the proximal part is more prone to a vascular necrosis due to the pattern of blood supply from distal to proximal. And the waist, which is narrower, is the part that is uh, more prone to fracture. So we have 29 bones in the hand. The distal aspect of radius and ulna, you have eight couple bones, which we have already uh, named. Uh, 14 phalanges where each finger has three phalanges except the thumb which has two then five metacarpals so in total there are 29 uh, bones so the radius and ulna form uh, part of the um, distal aspect of the forearm and bordering the wrist the radius is more massive distally and the ulna as you know is more massive at the proximal um, end forearm supination and pronation occurs at the um, proximal and distal radio ulna joint, which is a pivot synovial joint. And supination and promotion are a result of the radius rotating around the ulna. That's what causes supination and pronation. So we have eight couple bones, which we have said the uh, distal row and proximal row. How um, many students like the mnemonics, some, some lovers try positions that they cannot handle so scaphoid lunate triquetrum pisiform that's the um uh, for the proximal row that's the order from lateral to medial and trapezium trapezoid capitate and hermit from lateral to medial the distal row so some lovers try positions that they cannot handle so these ones are on the lateral these are the, on the medial so that's it about the bones we have five metacarpals and three phalanges on each finger except the thumb which has two phalanges so these are this is the thumb so it has two phalanges these are the metacarpals one two three four five you start naming first is usually the thumb is the first digit so you name all these bones from the thumb yeah so this is your scaphoid lunate okay um triquetrum and this is the pisiform then trapezium with the trapezoid capitis is the largest and then that's the hermit that's the hook of hermit it's the distal portion of radius distal portion of ulna so it's the radius really that forms the wrist joint that articulates with the couple bones the ulna is separated from the triquetrum by an articular disc so it doesn't the ulna bone does not border the the couple bones directly then this is a cross section of the couple bones on x-ray um, if they bring you an x-ray and ask you to identify these bones again scaphoid lunate triquetrum okay then um, trapezium trapezoid capitate and the hermit and that's the hook of hermit 
then these are the metacarpals from the first to the fifth and these are the phalanges of course this is the radius the radius is the largest bone distally so again uh, trapezium trapezoid capitate hermit and its hook the scaphoid lunate and the traquetrum radius and armor so this is your scaphoid and you can see there's a fracture here the fracture of scaphoid it's commonly a missed uh, you can miss it so you have to look very keenly and usually when there's a fracture of scaphoid the most prone area of fracture is at the waist of the scaphoid and it's it presents with pain around the region of the anatomical snuff box so which joints are in the hand so you have the wrist joint wrist joint is a condyloid type of synovial joint it allows four major movements flexion and extension radial and ulnar deviation so remember the radial deviation is towards the side of the thumb ulnar deviation is towards the small finger so the motion of the wrist is due to articulation of radius with the proximal carpal bones so really it's the radiocarpal joint that's where the movement occur there is usually an articular disc separating the distal aspect of the ulna from the triquetrum so these are the uh, movements of the wrist flexion where you have also called palmar flexion the anterior deviation from anatomical position extension is a dorsal flexion abduction is the radial what we call radial deviation or radial flexion and adduction is the ulnar deviation or ulnar flexion so which muscles cause which movements so you have the wrist flexors flexor carpi radialis flexor carpi ulnaris and palmaris longus okay then we have the wrist extensors, extensor carpi radialis longa that attaches on the dorsum of the second metatarsal base, extensor carpi radialis brevis, dorsum of the third metatarsal base, and extensor carpi ulnaris, the dorsum of the fifth uh, metacarpal base. So these muscles do not cause finger movements, they insert onto the metacarpals, okay, leading or some carpal bones like cap, uh, extensor carpi ulnaris also insert onto some parts of the PC form. So they cause um, extension, these ones will cause flexion. So when you look at the movements of the finger, well now we get to the, sorry, if you're to talk about radial deviation, the ones that insert this radialis longus, radialis brevis, flexor carpi radialis, they cause radial deviation at the wrist. Then flexor carpi ulnaris, extensor carpi ulnaris, they cause ulnar deviation at the wrist. So when you talk of movements that occur at the finger, usually the reference is the third finger. So any movement that occurs from the third uh, um, finger towards the third finger, that's adduction. Away from the third finger, that's abduction. And then the thumb has numerous movements because of the um, mobility of the first couple metacarpal joint. So there's flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, and opposition. So those are the movements that occur, uh, movements of the thumb that can occur. And um, this is what we mean. The reference point is the third digit. So if you move these other digits towards the third digit, that's adduction. And if you move away, that's abduction. Okay, so if this, if you move your digits away from the third digit, that's abduction. If you move towards, that's adduction. So we have intrinsic uh, muscles. You can see like here, you can appreciate the first dorsal interosse muscle. This is the radius artery. So we have intrinsic muscles um, that are found in the hand. Extrinsic muscles are the ones in the forearm that go to insert onto the um, hand, the bone bones in the hand so intrinsic muscles we have those that form thin eminence they're innervated by median those in the hypothenar eminence innervated by ulna nerve and the intermediate innervated by ulna and some part median there are no muscles in the hands that are innervated by the radial nerve so these are the muscles these are the thinner muscles hypothenar muscles and you can appreciate this is what you call the palmar ponyrosis from the uh, palmaris longus flexor retinacular then it divides onto the the digits so this is you. Um, it has transverse fibers and longitudinal fibers of palmaris longus. So the thin eminence is made up of flexor polishes brevis, abductor polishes brevis, and opponents polishes, while the hypothenar eminence made up of muscles with a small digit, abductor digiti minima, flexor digiti minimi, and opponents digiti minimi. 
and the intermediate part has the adductor pollicis, lumbricals, the interosses, we have palmar interosses, ovola, and dorsal interosses. Some books consider the adductor pollicis as part of the um, thinner eminence. So this is the adductor pollicis, you can see it's transverse head and oblique head, it has two heads, transverse head and oblique head, and remember the radial artery as it curves to come and form the deep palmar arc, it passes between the two heads, and you can see where it's inserting around the metacarpal, first metacarpal phalangeal joint. These are the lumbricals, the first and second lumbricals are unipennates, you can see only on one um, side of the tendon. This is the tendon of flexa um, digitorum profundus that's going to the base of the distal phalanx. So that's unipennate. First and second are unipennate. Third and fourth are bipennate. You can see that from two um, tendons, then that's how they come to insert. So again, you appreciate the lumbrical and where they're coming to insert onto the extensor hood. So the dorsal interosse, you, you, how do you remember? Dab, dorsal interosse, abduct. So these are the interosse on the dorsal aspect. You can see them in between the metacarpals. They will cause abduction of the digits. And then the first dorsal interosse, you can see them between the metacarpals. This is your anatomical snuff books. What are the boundaries of the anatomical snuff books? Laterally, you have extensor pollicis brevis going to the uh, uh, proximal phalanx of the thumb. Then you have the abductor pollicis longus. Okay, and then medially, you have this tendon to the base of the dorsum part of the distal phalanx, and that is your extensor pollicis longus. So extensor pollicis longus is medially, and laterally you have extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus. What are the contents? You have the cephalic vein here, radial artery, and there's usually a superficial branch of um, radial nerve. So those are the contents of the anatomical snuff box. The base is formed by the distal part of the radius, some part of the scaphoid bone, and the trapezium. The volar interosses they cause adduction, pad, that's how you remember, you say pad. Palma interosse, adduct, so pad. Adduction is when the digits move towards the line of reference, which is usually the third digit, and you can see here are the palma interosses. They usually, you can see them inserting onto the dorsal expansion. So what's the blood supply of the hand? You have the ulnar um, arc and the radial arc. The ulnar artery arc, has superficial uh, is a forms the superficial palmar arc and um uh, from it you have common palmar arteries and proper palmar digital arteries common palmar and proper palmar and then the radial artery forms the deep palmar arc and from it you get the dorsal digital artery the princeps pollicis artery and radialis indices arteries so this is what we mean so this is your superficial arc so it's definitely mainly formed by the ulnar artery but on the lateral aspect, it's completed uh, by joining the radial artery. So we've said it will give the um, common palmar. You can see the common palmar um, arteries, and each common palmar divides to give you proper palmar digital arteries. You can see here proper palmar digital to the digits. This is common palmar in between the metacarpals. You can even have the palmar, um, sorry, common palmar then divide into proper palmar digital. So superficial arc mainly by the ulnar artery. And then the, you can see it again. So you have your common palmar and palmar, uh, proper palmar digital arteries. So superficial arc, com ulnar artery completed on the other side by radial artery. Then when you come to, this is again your superficial arc, common palmar and proper palmar digital. When you come to the deep arc, it's mainly formed by radial artery, completed medially by joining the ulnar artery. And what are the branches? You have uh, princeps pollicis to the thumb, radialis indices to the um, index finger, and then you have the palmar metacarpal arteries. You can see this palmar metacarpal arteries. So those are the uh, branches from the deep palmar arc. Again, formed by radial artery, completed on the medial aspect by ulnar artery, you have your uh, princeps pollicis, you have your radial indices, and also the uh, 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 the, palm, the metacarpal branches. So in the next slide,